Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my blitz game number 627. I started off with e4. My opponent played e5. And we get the uh, classical opening, the uh, Italian game. After I attack the pawn with knight f3, defends with knight c6, I play the second choice here, bishop to c4, leading to the Italian game. It goes bishop c5, which is the main move, knight f6. The two knights' defense is a very respectable and interesting alternative. Um, but bishop c5, I go c3, the main move here, preparing to build up in the center with b4. Um, you can play b4 right away. That's the Evans gambit, also an interesting way to play. Um, and now he goes d6, so kind of a rare move here. Knight f6 is the Bane line. And then I'm prepared to play d5 and go in, d4 rather, and go into these uh, exciting uh, gambit lines. Um, this uh, opening has made a comeback recently at the top level, and, and the, the top guys all play um, d3 here after knight f6, just getting a solid center and building up slowly. Um, but uh, I, I think d5 is pretty interesting, uh, particularly in blitz play. Um, okay, but he didn't go with that. Cancel that. He went with um, uh, d6, so just shoring up the center. And um, it's not a bad move, um, although I could. It turns out I can play d4 immediately. I didn't realize this here. And of course, d4 is a move you have to be careful with in positions you're not uh, completely familiar with because it gets complicated pretty quickly. There's the pin here to worry about, which will undermine uh, white's support of the center. But I guess there's just enough time here. d4 comes with the tempo to kick the bishop back, and then uh, then you could maybe even throw on the move h h3 there to prevent the pin, I guess. Um, anyway, we didn't go like that. I, I just castled here, not not knowing that d4 was playable there, not not wanting to take the chance. He went with uh, the pen right away, bishop g4, and now we go with d3, a typical response. And this knight, since this knight is pinned now, um, d4 is not so attractive. I think uh, black can just uh, win a pawn there, in fact. <laughs> so um, the uh, game continued. I played uh, h6 here. Oh, no, he played h6 here. Okay, and then we're just out of the opening book. So let's go to the notation page. But this is still uh, an okay position. It's about equal. I play b4 here, which is the traditional way of playing uh, the Italian game, kicking this bishop back. b4 kicks the bishop back, and it um, also protects the um, uh, a5 square, prevents the knight from coming to a5 and harassing the bishop. Um, the move a4 has been getting a lot of play at the top levels, and that's that's what they were playing at the candidates tournament, for example. I don't know if it was exactly this position, but the, the same kind of position. <clears throat> and uh, this does the same thing. First of all, it threatens the uh, the bishop. So the bishop has to move. Otherwise, there's going to be b4 and then a5 trapping the bishop. So so the move a4 is kind of a sneaky trap. You can, you can try it yourself in a blitz game. Maybe you can pick up a piece that way. But, of course, the good players will respond to that. Play the move a6 or maybe a5. And now, um, later, if black wants to harass the bishop, you already have the retreat square. So it does the same th two things as the as the b4 move does. It it threatens the, the bishop with tempo, and it uh, provides a... Uh, uh, protection for the uh, the light squared bishop here to avoid losing the bishop pair. So an interesting way to play. But I ju just go with the uh, traditional line b4. There's nothing wrong with this one either, of course. Um, you know, just just that's a, another a different way to play it if you're looking for something something different. Okay, so he retreats the bishop. I develop my knight. I'm going to do this typical knight maneuver. The knight comes over to the uh, king side. You'll see that in the game. He plays a6 for a retreat square for his bishop. I got Ricky one, so that my knight has a square to go to and also to more protection for the e pawn, so it becomes possible for me to push the d pawn forward. He goes knight g e7, a little bit unusual. Normally the knight goes to f6, and I continue my knight maneuver. He castles. Um, the knight here does prepare um, the move f5 for black, so that could be what black is thinking. But uh, I think I'm going to be a little quicker. Uh, he spent some time calculating here. Maybe he was trying to figure out if uh, f5 was working, but eventually he decided to play queen to d7. So I kicked the bishop, and then he decided just to trade it off. Um, so everything has been going along fine according to the chess engine. White has a typical kind of opening edge, nothing great. Um, but it doesn't like this bishop takes f3. The chess engine wants black to keep the bishop here and just retreat the bishop back to e6, and I think that's fine. So after the bishop takes, the queen takes, there's some kind of edge for white in this position. And uh, 
And after knight g6, there's actually a winning attack for white. So this idea completely escaped me. And uh, you know, I'm not going to give this to you as a quiz because this one's a little bit hard to find. But if you want to, uh, you know, test out your attacking instincts, you could try setting up this position on the board and seeing if you could uh, on a board at home and see if you, you can discover the attack. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about the attack. It is um, bishop takes h6, just sacrifice the bishop there. And then uh, if he takes back, which is the way to try and refute it, the move queen to f6, that's the key idea. That they sack the bishop here, pulls the pawn away from g7, and the queen can come into f6. And now the queen is um, threatening just to take that knight. And that is uh, a pretty big threat because this uh, pawn is pinned by the bishop over here. So it's a, it's a three-piece attack. There's only three pieces operating. Um, the bishop, the queen, and the knight is ready to jump in. Um, you know, the reason this didn't occur to me, one reason perhaps, is that... Um, this bishop on uh, b6 here is controlling the e3 square, so this rook is not hopping into the attack. And normally, uh, to make these attacks succeed, you need to lift a rook and bring it over. But here we can break through with just these three pieces. And just uh, as one example, if the knight retreats as a way to save the knight, you, you don't just grab the pawn here, but you play knight to h5, and you actually have a mate here. It's, it's an unstoppable mate at this point. <laughs> so, so that's pretty serious. Um, so the best move is for black to uh, defend the knight with the king. And then um, you can bring your knight to f5 this time. And uh, the rook comes over to try and hold things together. You're, you're threatening mate here. If the rook comes over to try and hold things together, then you can take with the bishop here. And, um, and you're, you're getting back material. So, uh, the, and the attack continues. So this is still a winning position for white. It's just not as quick as the other one. <laughs> so that was, that was pretty interesting. After knight g6, I have a winning attack. So I did not spot that at all. Played knight to f5. He went uh, knight c to e7. Okay, and right here, there's another tactic that I also missed during the game, but I'll leave this as a quiz because you might be able to find this one. So um, uh, pause the video here and see if you can find the tactic for white. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now. It has some similarities to the last one. Um, he sacrificed the knight here. And then when, he, then when he takes back, you take with the bishop. And now the key point is that the bishop is attacking the rook. The rook is the only piece that's defending f7. So if the rook moves away, queen takes f7 is devastating. So black has to give up the exchange. So you get a rook and two two pawns. You get the two pawns in front of the king plus a rook for the two minor pieces. And uh, and so that's good enough. You've exposed the king and you've got a, a rough kind of material uh, equality there. So um, so you have a good attack at that point. Um, anyway, I didn't see that one either. I played queen g3 just going after the pin knight or trying to take advantage of this pin and put pressure on the knight. Of course the knight is still protected by the knight on e7. I was trying to figure out if there's some uh, sequence of exchanges that would solve <laughs> that would that would uh, that would uh, yield some benefit for me. But he just uh, played king h7 and protected everything. So we're we're back to about even. Uh, let's see. I push on with d4 at this point, trying to shut out that annoying bishop and maybe allow my rook to get into the game. He took on f5, and I just took back and I totally overlooked actually that he could take with the queen. So. Uh, what, what's interesting about this, though, is, is even though I'm a pawn down, the chess engine still thinks uh, white is okay here. It rates all of these positions as uh, in the range of about even up to a certain point. So we'll, we'll get there. Um, bishop to d3. I mean, I have uh, active pieces, and I can kick his queen around a little bit. Um, I take here to try and uh, isolate the e-pawn in a way. It's not actually isolated because... Uh, there's an f-pawn there that could support it, but it's, at the moment, kind of isolated because the f-pawn can't, can't move, and so I can get some pressure on it. Let's see, um, and then I play bishop e3, once again trying to shut down this annoying bishop along this diagonal. He just trades out at this point. I take back, and he plays uh, rook, rook f to e8. And now um, this move uh, starts me on some kind of downhill path. If I just played rook a to d1, even though I'm a pawn down, um, the chess engine thinks 
I'm still doing fine here. And that's just a natural developing move. So certainly one I should think about. But I was uh, going pawn hunting here. So a bit of a mistake. Queen c5, you know, is putting pressure on this pawn and attacking this pawn. Um, he goes rook a to d8. This is a good move. He activates his rook following the principle that I'm ignoring here. And then um, I did see this much. I calculated that after this exchange, he probably wants to take with a pawn because if he takes with the queen, I'll, I'll be able to uh, grab the e pawn here. So this messes up his pawn structure. And then I lifted my rook <coughs> to e3. This was uh, maybe my last chance to play rook a to d1 and uh, get a good position. After rook e3, uh, it, it continues this downhill path, started with queen c5. Um, oh, there was another idea here. If I go ahead and grab the pawn immediately, queen takes c7, he can enter with his rook and put pressure on the pawn, and I have to defend it, the f pawn. Uh, but this is a slightly better version. Something similar to this happened during the game, but it's a slightly better version because I hadn't, this is happening before I did the rook lift, so uh, I, have, I can defend with this rook, and then this rook is free to operate down here after I push the a pawn or if I decide to abandon it. Uh, in the game, I lifted the rook here, and now he comes in with rook, uh, oh no, he pushed d4 first. I grab the pawn and he comes in with rook d2. So now he's got pressure on this pawn and I have to find a way to defend it. And I come up with a queen to g3. So uh, he, there's, uh, and he plays rook to f8, uh, piling up the pressure there and forcing my rook over. So I end up having to defend that pawn with the rook anyway. Uh, but there was an even uh, more interesting way of forcing that, which is to uh, lift his rook to e5. The chess engine found this one. And there's this threat. The rook could come to g5, chasing my queen away, and then this pawn hangs. So after rook e5, I'm forced to defend with rook f1. And uh, now he can just grab the a pawn or, or do whatever. I think uh, maybe rook to c2 is an idea too. Um, grabbing the pawn is not necessarily the best move there, actually. We'll see in the game. Let's see. Um, after queen g3, he just went rook f8. Okay, that forces me to bring my rook over. But uh, well, his, his rook is not as active. If, if he had played rook e5, you know, then it has more ideas up here. Um, he goes queen f5, and um, I just play a4. So he lets me uh, save that pawn. Um, but he still has some pressure here. So, But I think we're all in the range of about even. He goes uh, rook to d3 here, and I go rook f to e1 defending. And it's this exchange that's kind of... Uh, starts to turn the, the scales in my favor again after this. Um, things, things, are looking, things are looking okay for white. I've got even material and I've got pressure on the e-pawn. Actually, white's a little better after this. So uh, Chess Engine wants to play queen back to f6. And then, um, you know, he's looking at this pawn and uh, I can't take this pawn because of the pin here. And um, I can't take his rook because, uh, you know, I mean, it might be tempting to take the rook and then grab the pawn, but that would leave the f pawn hanging. So I'm kind of tied up here. So the, the way to break out is with this f3 move, similar to the game, and, and it might continue like this. Queen takes c3, and rook takes e4, and uh, the position is about even once again. So rook takes e3 uh, helps me mm -hmm. a little bit, and white's a little bit better. And h4, yeah, the engine didn't like uh, h5 either, I guess because it creates some weaknesses over here. Um, but it didn't have... Oh, you know what the chess engine wants to do is it wants us to fight for the d-file. So it's recommending queen to d7 for black at this point. And after h5, it's recommending queen to d4 for me. So it wants us to put our queens on the d-file and, and try and grab that space. Okay, I played rook to e2. And uh, he went uh, rook to e8, defending his pawn. And I played f3. That was the idea, trying to trying to arrange uh, a way for I, so I could play f3. Although this turns out to be just equal, so the chess engine thinks I should just kind of sit here and push on with a5 and uh, play this position and, and just kind of live with this pawn. I don't know. It's kind of natural to try and get rid of it with a move like f3. But this leads to a position which is just equal. He takes, and actually I calculated this part out correctly, so that was nice. I take his rook. He takes my rook. And um, I take back. I just had to check to make sure there were no intermediate moves like pawn to f2 check that worked out. But it was always covered at critical moments. So um, 
this is uh, the the same course of events that the chess engine gave. So I guess I calculate that out okay. And then he comes in here, queen b1 check. I have a safe square for my king. And now we should probably, and he might have planned to play a move like queen a1. It's a natural move, attacking these two pawns. I would play queen f3, defending this pawn and attacking his b pawn. And we would trade like this. And this would be about even. The material is even. I have some kind of majority over here I could try and push forward and win with, but uh, he probably has enough counterplay with his pawns over here and his queen being able to deliver checks along this diagonal and along the back rank potentially. Um, so um, an even position at this point with best play. But instead, uh, he played um, in this position, he played queen to a2. So it might have just been a mouse slip. He might have been trying to play queen a1. Or maybe he wanted to bring his queen back this way and didn't notice. But uh, anyway, after queen takes a2, he just resigned. But there was an interesting game there. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon.